Good evening. Welcome into this week's episode of the Power Hour. I'm Steve. Of course, joined as always by the urban sensation C Red, the real deal Rion Skills, and somewhere in the ether uh, is the one and only Rachel, aka Cactus Rack, aka Russian Blue. And tonight it is knockouts night here on the Power Hour. It's all Chicago knockouts, and we are joined by very special guests. First off, is our resident minor superstar, the one, the only, Lunala. Hello, Lunala. Hi. All right. Big hi from Lunala. We're glad to see you, as always. And our new friend tonight joining the show is an actual Chicago land knockout who will kick your ass uh, on a dime and is also one of the coaches for the knockouts minor division. Please welcome the one, the only, the radiant punchline. Hi. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Punchline. It's nice to meet you. Nice to see you. Uh, I've seen you skate many times. It's glad to have, we're glad to have you aboard tonight on this show. Happy to be here. I'm excited. That's going to be fun. Red, say hello to the people. Hello, people. Okay. <laughs> we're going to move right on from there. Um, the question, question number one that I want to ask, I'm going to direct to both Lunala and Punchline is the legacy of the Chicago knockouts is at an all time high. In my opinion, Homewood is in love with this. Uh, I was at a high school reunion this past Saturday and everybody at the, the bar that I was at was talking about the knockouts. And it was suggested to me that next year, uh, when we have our reunion get together that we have it at the knockouts at a knockouts bout. So the word is out that the knockouts are the best thing in Homewood right now, entertainment wise. And, you know, obviously punchline is a present knockout part of the active roster, kicking ass and taking names all through the end of the year. And of course the future <laughs> of the knockouts is Lunala. So uh, I guess I'm kind of interested to know how you feel about being part of this legacy. Let's start with Lunala. Uh, legacy, history. You are the next generation. How do you feel about being part of that? Excited. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I mean, you have been your mom's shadow for years in roller derby, and now you have gotten your chance. I mean, you are like the next generation. You're like the chosen few that have lineage directly to the original knockouts. I mean, that's really exciting stuff. You should have seen me at the bow. I was growling and everything at other people. I mean, we've I've, I've been on the business end of your mom growling. Um, so about growling, what was occurring? that was making you growl i mean what was i mean what was the situation i mean to growl at someone that's a that, i mean even when the i mean there's growling at the main knockout stage too don't get me wrong i've seen that too what was going on that made you growl the other team's jammer oh what'd she do well they kept getting by me so i kept hitting them and growling so yeah, so, uh, that's not the only time you uh you gave the other team's blockers the business Yes. You gave her the business. What exactly is the business? Elbowing in the gut. Oh, well, that God, that's your mom's signature move. I've seen her decapitate people midsections many times. Um, that's amazing stuff. And I love all of those answers, every one of them. Punchline, you are a coach, so you're training the next generation while being a major player in the knockout war that goes from February until November. How do you feel about the legacy of the knockouts? So I am relatively new to knockouts. I actually just started uh, in January uh, of this year with the team, um, never really having skated outside of like just going to the roller rink every once in a while. Um, so it's really, it's really cool to be a part of such a wonderful community of people and, you know, as a fresh coach, and I'll let Juice kind of explain more uh, about the minor stuff later, but, you know, just being a fresh player and a fresh coach, it's really cool to get that opportunity to hang out with the minors and kind of watch them grow as I'm growing at the same time. That is an incredibly interesting dynamic. I mean, the way you skate, I just assumed you'd been doing this your whole life, uh, <laughs> which is a compliment indeed. Um, so 
you're teaching while you're learning. That is a very interesting combination there. How's that working for you so far? I enjoy it a lot. <laughs> every every single thing that I can like take in and absorb from my per like my practices with the Premier League, um, you know, I'm just trying to get that mindset down to the minor league in the best way that I can. Again, just being like a fresh coach and that sort of thing. So kind of just learning the ropes and getting used to, you know, being a part of part of the whole thing. Now I've heard that you are the coach of Lou Nala's team. I was yes, for this last bout for the Punishers. Yeah. All right, so Lunala, it's time to dish. Do you like the <laughs> coach? I yes. mean, right now we're in Chicago where everybody hates coaches. It's it's an <laughs> epidemic in this town. There's not a coach out there that anybody likes. Yeah. Are you going to be Justin Fields and pile on your coach, or are are you are you okay with Punchline so far? I like Coach Punchy. Coach <laughs> Punchy. Oh, see, when you're a commentator, you look for all kinds of names to use. So uh, believe me, punchy at some point will come out of my mouth at one of those bouts. Um, <laughs> so when you are being coached by Coach Punchy, uh, what about her style do you like? What What makes you like her so much? Everything. Everything. Wow, you're the easiest guest I've ever had in my life. So positive, <laughs> so happy. Um, to be fair, to be fair, I've only coached one, like this was my first bout this past weekend uh, with the minors coaching them. So it's, I'm very new. So she doesn't know. She doesn't know everything about you yet. We'll That's we'll okay. See. That's pretty much true <laughs> at Chicago sports as well. We got coaches out there that, that don't know anything either. So it works out perfectly well here uh, for us in the show. Um, Hopefully she likes me later too. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, what is some of the, what does coach punchy tell you to do? What are some of the things that she says, uh, go do this or do this like this? What are some of the things she's taught you? He definitely reminds me to stay on the inside line. Like my mom. Thank you. <laughs> it's always a forgotten spot sometimes. <laughs> that's a, that's, that's really cool. Now I was not able to attend the last minors bout. I was, uh, in a land far away. Um, I don't know who won. So did you win? Did you lose? So the scrappers won for my team. Okay. But then the uh, brawlers did not win. Oh, okay. So it was a tough night. Yeah, so she didn't, she didn't say that they lost. She said they did not win. Oh well, I mean, hey, that's that's the way we all feel about it. I've I've gone through many wrestling matches uh, with with that attitude. It makes me sleep better at night. Um, so. Were you say when it was over? What did Coach Punchy say to you after the after the match was over? Did she give you any inspirational speeches or? He said I did a really good job. Well, hey, that's good. Positive reinforcement, fantastic. That that's an excellent coaching style. Um, <laughs> it being your first coaching experience, uh, take us through how you prepared for it. What did you do? Were you just out there going, well, I'm just going to kind of watch what's happening and see what I can do. Or did you have a plan going in? Um, For me, just being the first time, I really, I knew what to expect. I didn't know what to expect. And I, the whole thing, I just wanted everybody to have a good time and have fun and do their best. So I think for me, I just went into it, you know, trying to be like that positive, um, positive person and just kind of, pumping everybody up to do their best job, you know? So that was kind of my whole thing. Well, I mean, I think that's that's a great way to do it. I mean, not knowing exactly everything that they can do, what levels they're all at, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the best way to handle a situation is to make sure everybody's having a positive experience because it's when those negative things creep in that it can affect people's confidence and make it not a fun experience. So that's an, that is an excellent way to kind of break yourself in. Are you going to coach again? Is this something that you're going to continue to do? Absolutely. Absolutely. I enjoy every second of it. And again, just watching everybody growing as they're learning. And when I, you know, from my first practice with the minors to like just this first bout with them that I was able to um, be a part of just the growth that everybody is showing is just so amazing. And it like warms my heart so hard. <laughs> that That is, that's really interesting. And that's really cool. So mm -hmm. you've had the one bout and the next bout is coming up a little later in October, the next minors bout, which I, I am going to be at to, to do commentary for. So I'm super excited hey. about that. Um, what did you see in this first action you've seen as a coach that you're going to take with you into the October bout? 
what what do you what do you have a, a different plan are you gonna be like well i saw them do this maybe we'll try this um so i really hope for the skaters that they just continue their enthusiasm that they had like it was such a great great time and such a high energy for everybody so i do hope that they take all of that with them and just you know focus on their strategies and just continue learning and doing everything that they know how to do and that we're coaching them to do every every practice just continuing to apply those skills and you know again having the best time ever but still you know focusing on the task at hand if you will that's fantastic and uh you know i think that that's pretty much the common denominator of all the knockout activities that I've ever seen and been a part of fun and family is the most important thing, whether it be the family of the roller derby itself, it's, it's communion with the fans, it's communion with Homewood. It's all about fun first, joy first, family first, and then, you know, derby and, and, and that kind of thing. Second, although a very close second, because boy, when you guys skate, you skate awfully, awfully hard. Um, I am not the only host of this show. There are others. And, you know, if they let me, I will continue to ask questions uh, for the next hour. So see red, we've yet to get you to a derby show. We we, we're trying, you know, we're trying to get you out of the chair, get you, get you into Homewood to see one of these bouts. You've heard these, these two amazing superstars speaking, uh, surely at this point, 15 minutes in, you have something to add or a question. Not a thing. <laughs> okay, moving on. Uh, Rion, how about you? Anything? Any questions? Anything at all? Rion's our picture guy, so you will see pictures on the screen. Right now we've got, uh, I believe that's a picture from the Miners bout. I believe that looks like, uh, is that not uh, Marley Quinn's daughter there? That is. That is. So that is that is obviously a Miners bout picture. <laughs> Um, your question is, do I have any questions? That is my question. Do you have any questions? I have plenty, but I didn't expect to get asked questions. So I guess I will, uh, go this route. Uh, as far as between player coach, and this is for both, uh, coach punch and for Lunella, uh, what do you think is the biggest adjustment as far as knowing someone that is an extension of someone that you play with as opposed to someone that has taken care of? Like, how do you, like, bridge that gap, so to speak? Like, without playing a favor, so to speak? That, does that make any sense? So, are you saying, like, yeah, so you're saying, like, uh, like you know, like Luna and Cactus, is there favoritism with the Derby girls who have minors on the minor team? Is that you're saying? Yes. I mean, I know there's, there's going to be inadvertently, but I mean, as far as the training aspect of it, has there you been know, one since you've been like a part of how you saw, okay, this one's going to be pretty good. Yeah. I mean, for me, everyone's the same. It, for, like it, to me, it doesn't matter who's, you know, child or minor that you are. Everybody should be treated exactly the same when it comes to practice and that sort of thing. What they do outside of the home is, you know, different. So it might be a little bit easier for somebody who has, you know, a Premier League parent <laughs> as opposed to somebody who doesn't have a skating parent. But that's just right, something that they right. do outside of it. But during practice and everything, I've, you know, it should be relatively the same, <laughs> I think, right, anyway. Okay. And again, I'm, I'm you know... No, it's, it's yeah. Your opinion is is very important because you're the coach now. I mean, you're we have it's interesting perspective, and that was a really good question, Rian. Uh, yeah, not to mention that Pac Man has joined us. Uh, Pac Man is our mascot and our resident uh, good natured soldier. How are you, Pac Man? Doing good, Stephen. It's good to be back on the Power Hour. Glad to have you back. Glad you're feeling better. Say hello to Coach Punchy and Lunala. Hello, Punchy. Hello, Lunala. Hi. Uh, Pac-Man, you've been listening for a few minutes. Is there anything that th has been said that uh, you have a question about or, or anything you want to ask? You know what? I do have a question for Lunala. Um, I know you've been doing this for a little while now. Uh, what's been your favorite part and what's been the hardest thing to learn going into roller derby? Um... 
The hardest thing for me to learn is to focus on staying on the inside line. <laughs> and I think the um thing I enjoy is just being in character during the bouts. Everybody loves those dragon wings. That 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 it is totally awesome. Um when you play Premier, this question is for for Coach Punchy or Punchline in the Premier League since you you started uh, this, and I really I do find it amazing that you just started with the knockouts in such a short time, going from just a free roller skater to roller derby. That's an amazing turnaround. How has the transition been for you to to be in a in a contact combat sport? Sure. Um. So. I will say that I have, I figure skated competitively competitively for 14 years. So I'm not like new to the sort of moves that go with being on skates. It's just, so for me, it's just translating everything I knew from figure skating on ice onto roller skates, which is absolutely like the same thing. Um, So I'm just trying to apply those skills to my skating there. And then I think the biggest hurdle for me when I first began, you know, with this contact sport, I was like, I don't. Like, I don't hit people. I don't know how, like, what am I doing? Right. Um, So I think the biggest hurdle I had from going from, you know, figure skating where falling is not the best thing to derby where I'm going to get hit. I'm going to hit somebody and it's okay to fall. You get right back up and do your thing. Um, I think that was the biggest transition for me at the beginning of everything. And then just sort of, you know, again, just learning every single practice. I'm learning something new, getting more comfortable on my skates and doing the thing. (laughs) When you took that first shot and uh, we have seen some amazing shots uh, of, of of the Derby girls hitting each other. Uh, We watched two of the, of the, the knockouts literally beat up a fight ref at the last, and there was a a large mallet involved. It was, it was really, really rough business. Uh, When you got your first shot, when somebody tried to lay you out the first time, what went through your mind and how do you process that coming from figure skating? I mean, that, that, that's a graceful, <laughs> el- there's a graceful elegance to figure skating and there's a Neanderthal violence when it comes to roller derby, like any contact sport. How did that feel the first time it happened? Honestly, honestly, I don't remember. I think I blacked out and I was just like, oh, okay, this is what we're doing and we're cool and I can hit you back. Great. I'm going to do it. <laughs> I, I had a similar experience my first wrestling match uh I don't remember it they tell me that it was terrible and I believe them because it was just a complete bore getting beaten up but that's that's neither here yeah. nor there what has been your favorite moment so far uh in your from from February till now with the knockouts what has been your favorite moment in all the bouts you've been in in the bouts, it's just, and it's not even just in the bouts, but just generally even at practice and that sort of thing, when we circle up and we, you know, introduce ourselves to each other. And like, if there's new skaters, just the, just the sense of community and camaraderie and the friendship and, you know, just, just all of that family, like you feel like you're in a family with, with all the girls, like all the, all the skaters and everybody, you just, that's the thing that gets me like wanting to cry is because it's just such a like great community um, to be a part of. Yes, we have heard uh, we have heard Rachel say that on more than one occasion. The the family feeling of the knockouts mm-hmm. is, is really an addiction, and it's really special. Lunala, I will ask you that same question: What has been your favorite moment so far of your brand new career? Probably skating with my best friend and her sister, and then a few of the skaters' kids I grew up with. So let's talk about your bestie. Who is your bestie? My best friend was Sogaleo at the bout. Her and her little sister was Lily Liar. Okay. Um, so Sogo is chaotic. She's funny and obsessed with cats. Lily is also chaotic like her sister. But it looks like me somehow. <laughs> Magic. And um just like dancing to any music. So that's been fun. Um since you've been a knockout, 
have you felt like, you know, you, when you like when you're at school or just when you're walking around in life, do you feel kind of tough and kind of more confident? Because, you know, we know if you mess with a knockout, there are many a knockout waiting to knock somebody out. If they mess with a knockout, try to say that five times fast. Yes, I do feel tough because a lot of kids who are at my school are also mean, but I have a whole team and stuff to back me up. And I know a little Taekwondo. A lot of Taekwondo. You're pretty good at that. I have seen photographic evidence to that. And again, we were talking about this on social media. If, if people are mean to you, if there are, there are bullies happening, you know, we know people. We'll come out there. Yeah. We got your back. Um, A question I've been meaning to ask you, and I, I thought I would ask you this when we were at a show, you know, while your mom is working, but I'll ask you now because I'll be, because I, I always enjoy putting your mom on the spot. What is it like being the daughter of her and her, her larger than life image uh, when it comes to roller derby? How do you feel about that? Even. What? We're this hard hitting journalism here. Oh my God. <laughs> We go for the tough questions, Cactus. I, I can wait. We got time. I got time. I want to ask. Um, it's amazing because my teachers actually want to come to my bouts and her bouts because they want to see roller derby. And some of my teachers want to do it. Ah, well, the more the merrier. Mm -hmm. It's available to anybody. Yeah. So yeah. I, you you kind of answered my question, but you kind of I'm going to let you off the hook because I could I could actually hear your mom sweating at this point. So we'll let that we'll let that one sweating. be. Hazel, go ahead and answer his question. You did a good job of deflecting, though. <laughs> that was that was very well taught right there. That's 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 Rachel's. That's your mom's. You phrase the question, Steve. Uh, Ask it a little more directly. How does it feel to have a badass for a mom? Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Well, there we go. That's what I was looking for. That's what I was looking. For. Um, Hazel, you were very small when you got introduced to roller derby. Did you love it right away, or has it taken some time? Uh, <laughs> I liked it right away. Yeah? I think it's just because you get to beat people up. <laughs> so, if you loved it right away, I mean, it, now you're doing it. And you haven't been doing it very, what, what's right about now? What made now the time to do it? What What about now? What What is important now that you decided, I'm going to do this right now? It being started and... The like minor league being started and just liking to beat people up and skate at the same time. It's a good answer. You are tough like your mom. An apple doesn't fall far from the tree. Um, I'm gonna ask a variation of that question to Coach Punchline, uh, because it's interesting. What made you want to do roller derby? What about this activity caught your eye one day and you said, you know. I've been figure skating on ice for a long time. Maybe I should put some wheels on my shoes and beat people up. Yeah. So um, I actually stopped skating when I was like 16. So, you know, did all the things and whatever. Uh, I was sort of in a moment of like, what do I, I need to find a, I need to find a hobby. I need to do something for myself. Cause I have a 12 year old daughter. Um, she had her first photography debut for our knockouts. Uh, yeah. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> um so she's part of it that way she doesn't want to skate but that's okay <laughs> um so I honestly um spank girl I went to high school with her and she had posted something about joining roller derby and I was like oh my god I forgot like that was even a thing like I knew about it before but I never really like looked into anything and so she had posted something that she joined this team and I was like damn that looks really cool <laughs> uh you know give me the details I kind of want to get into it so at first I was a little bit hesitant. So she was like, you know, come to practice, talk to Crimson. Um, 
And I honestly, I was very nervous. I was like, I don't really know what to expect. Like, I don't know if I'm going to be good enough for this. I don't, I don't know if I can, if I'm that person inside me. Um, so, you know, after like a month of like, all right, I'm just, I'm going to go do it. <laughs> uh, January rolls around new year. I'm like, new year, new me. I'm going to try this, see what happens. And honest, like the, the first time I put my skates on with everybody at practice, I was like, this is amazing. And I want to be part of this for sure. So you're there at your first practice, skates are on, you've laced the boots, you roll out out of the track with all these ladies and it's go time. What's running through your mind? I was just impressed at how well everybody skates. And I felt like a little bit of an imposter at the time because I wasn't very steady on my skates. I haven't roller skated in like long, long time prior to coming to my first practice. Um, so yeah, I was feeling a little bit of imposter syndrome and just sort of like in awe with like giant eyes at all of my teammates and how amazing they are. And I'm like, I want, I want to be that, like, I want to do that thing and that thing and pull stuff from everybody that I can sort of just absorb and take in and <laughs> do in my own skating. In roller derby, you develop rivalries with various skaters and, you know, there's, there's that, uh, you know, that there always seems to be skaters that clash and, you know, develop wars. I mean, we, we love seeing, uh, you know, some of them go at it. It, it makes commentary a lot of fun and the, the fans really like it too. Even though it's been a short time, have you developed any kind of rivalry with any of the skaters to this point? Um, Is there anybody I mean, out there on the track that you're gunning for when you're up against them? Um, you know what? I'm going to say, I'm going to say Loretta. Oh, oh that's a, that's a bad woman right there. Loretta. I know. <laughs> she is like, she is like, you know, I, I, I've made this comparison on commentary with Loretta Sin. If you put Cactus Rack and Loretta Sin together on that front line and they are blocking on the same team, you are, your jammer is doomed because you're not getting uh -huh. that wall, that wall of humanity. It's not happening. Yeah, no, the, you know, Cactus and, and Loretta, and there's a few others that are just, just rocks, like just boulders and like they hit you and you are down immediately. And it's just, it's, they're very tough. So I think, yeah, I'd have to say that there are any, anybody who's just like that. And again, new, so maybe I'll get to that point as well, but uh, yeah, definitely watch out for Loretta during bouts. <laughs> <laughs> another one, another one that is pretty violent. C Red's a, a bit sweet on, and that's Megatron. He, she's uh yeah. she is one bad ombre as well. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Lunala, I asked yes. her a question about rivals. I want to ask you about it. I mean, I'm sure that you develop a little bit of animosity. I mean, you were growling after all. Are there any people that you skate against that are kind of your rivals? I know who your mom's rivals are. Uh, that is that is an easy deduction to make. But what about you? Who's out there that you skate a little extra hard when they're on the track with you? My rival right, my only rival right now is Adams. Ooh, I saw a picture of her up there just a few moments ago. Talk to me about why. What about her makes you want to growl? Yeah, he Adams he? is a he mom says. I did. I did not. I mean, I did not know that. Okay. What about him? Uh, makes you want to growl. He's just really annoying. Well, I mean, you know, boys tend to be annoying. That's 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 you know, that you're not wrong. You're not wrong there. Uh, we get that a lot. Um. So, what does he do that bothers you to the point where you feel like you got to growl and hit him in the midsection? He's really strong, and I'm trying to get by as a jammer. So whenever he's jamming, I make sure I don't really try to let him back past. Do you have any tricks like do you do you like go for his knees or do you just try to get in his way? What are you what, what's your plan? I just try to go for the gut. Go for the gut. Wow. You just know just all animal, aren't you? The the dragon coming out of you every time. So angry. Also, me and Poison Edie work together. To make Adam's life awful when it's on the track. <laughs> that, might, that might be the name of this episode. We're here to make <laughs> life miserable. That's that's my favorite thing so far tonight. That's so, very good. 
the reason me and Poison work together on this is because Poison is actually Adam's cousin. Ah, so it's a family affair. Mm-hmm. You know, rivalries of family. That's a tough, tough thing. Um, when it comes to being in the roller derby now, Lunala, when you're out on your skates, do you feel like do you feel like you're you're you could fly? I mean, is it is it that moment where you feel like th- there's something special going on? Yes. Yeah. I yeah. can tell. I can totally tell. You are quintessential roller derby. I can't wait to be part of this journey to watch you become go from minor to premier because I believe you could probably be in premier sooner than any of us want to admit. And I'm we're, an old man, so you got to hurry. We're all. I actually, <laughs> I actually kind of think Paws will be in premier before me because she's already in the brawlers. Ah, okay. Well, you never know. I mean, hey, I he you scares me. You keep pe- hitting people in the gut. You you find your way in the Premier League pretty darn quick. Um, Coach Punchline, so far in in obviously the the, the one match you've coached and you, with your time in the next, what what's been your with these young skaters? What is your what makes you the most proud about them? Everything. Honestly, <laughs> everything. <laughs> that, is, that is so. Odd. I I yeah. I, you know, I I I was expecting. That and I, I'm like she's gonna say everything, and yeah, thank you, you did absolutely when- everything. They're they're such an inspiration, and they're such hard workers and badass people, and you know just everything. <laughs> that's that's fantastic, mm-hmm. Red. You know we have compared roller derby to wrestling many times because you know we a lot of the stories the knockouts tell, and then a lot of the stories we tell. Uh, you know, th- they're very similar in nature. What have you heard tonight that that you've heard before? What what do you feel the 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 common denominator between wrestling and roller derby is? Their passion. Uh, you can see it in both their faces. Uh, I hate to put her on the spot, but if you look at Luella Lunella right now, she's like real calm. She's real quiet but as soon as you start talking about roller derby see there's that smile like you can see it in her face uh coach punchline you can also uh see her enthusiastic nature and her love already especially when it comes to the kids uh and you just don't get that. You have to have a passion for uh, anything you do if you plan to succeed. Uh, so I see both of these ladies succeeding very uh, highly uh, because you can tell they have a passion and a determination and a drive. And again, whether it is professional wrestling or whether it's roller derby or any contact sport, uh, you have to love what you do to do it. So um, that is the common denominator. It's a good answer, Red. Glad to have you at the party. <laughs> <laughs> um, Coach Punchline, um, as your roller derby career, both coaching and as a premier player, what are you what are you aiming for? What what are you hoping to get out of this? What is you know are you are you looking to be a champion? What what what? What drives you? What What do you want? Uh, you know, I've never, I haven't really thought about that, but I think I'm already getting what I want. And that's, you know, like, and I'm going to say it like a million times, it's just that sense of camaraderie and like familiness out of being part of this team is what I want to get out of it, what I'm already getting out of it. And I, you know, obviously just to do my best and keep getting better and better as I skate personally. So yeah, I, I guess that. So it's already, it's already all happening, I think for me, and I'm just going to keep going. <laughs> it's already a, a win-win. Um, yeah. Are you looking forward to the next bout? Yes, hundred percent. Unfortunately, I won't be at this next one because I have a prior engagement. So I'm really sad. So I'm letting all my crushers down and I feel terrible. Um, but I know that they're going to kill it and it's going to be amazing. And I can't wait to be in the next, next one. <laughs> that will be a very, very cool thing. Yeah. Uh, 
Lunala, are you looking forward to your next bout? Yes, hopefully I'm there. Hopefully you're there. What? <laughs> Where else are you going to be? I don't know. Rachel, what? What is? What is this? What is this? This. She can't hear you. She's in the kitchen. Oh, okay, good. Well, that's good. Well, now we can get some. All right, tell us all about your mom. Let's let's get the let's get the uh, deep. Um. <laughs> does, she, does she does she skate around the circle with you in the driveway? Hey, 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 you hey, 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 don't do it. Don't do it. Don't don't listen to it. I will. <laughs> I'm I've been very nice and just kind of letting things, but don't don't let Steve get you in trouble. Correct. He doesn't have to deal with that. He's just gonna hang up and then go to bed. He doesn't have to deal with anything after the fact. Don't don't let him deal with it. Don't I let say, him, Brian, no, I save indeed. <laughs> You're going for that hard hitting journalism again. Um, when it comes to being, uh, you know, obviously, you know, the knockouts, the season usually starts in February and runs through November, and there are all kinds of crazy bouts in between. Uh, but it's all a quest for the golden skate. Uh, you've seen the golden skate sitting up on the stage at the mouth. What does the golden skate mean to you? As far as you know, as a champion, I mean, the, the Super Bowl has the Super Bowl trophy, you know, they're, you know, being a champion. Is that something you would uh, like Coach Punchline to be a champion? Yeah, obviously. Who wouldn't obviously. want to coach? <laughs> you know, some people are, like I said, some people are just happy to be there. Uh, some people, you know, aren't happy until they're champions. I mean, it's. Yeah, uh, I would love for, and I, and I just, you know, with the Crushers, it's going to be awesome. I know that they, had won it last season so hopefully they can defend their title uh this time around and, and that would be really cool <laughs> to to be a part of that yeah definitely well, want to win <laughs> last year last year the uh the comic book crushers were very dominant and they they put a hurting on the horrific haunters so i have a feeling in this bout coming up in a few weeks the haunters have vengeance in their hearts and on their minds uh so boy that not having someone like you there uh it's 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 a it's a, it's definitely a loss of talent uh, so I don't know, boy, that's a, it's tough to repeat when you're a champion. They'll be, they'll be just fine. They got some killer people on the team and they'll do amazing. <laughs> right about that. They literally have killers on that team. That is absolutely 100% accurate. Um, <laughs> Lunali, when your next bout comes up, uh, who are you fighting? What, what, what's, what's give us the details on, on what it is. What's, what's the competition? I don't have any of the details. That's okay. That's okay. Except I, I, might should, be I should be no better rules. prepared. Except it might actually be a no rules. No rules. No rules. Rebellion. Oh. Rebellion. Oh my God. The, the inmates are going to run the asylum. We, we had that bout a few months ago where the fans got to run everything. And uh, that was such a, a crazy night that I ended up in the sin bin. Somebody paid and to see me. I ended up in the sin bin three or four times. <laughs> not happy. Yeah, we were not happy about that. That was uh, that's scary in the sin bin when when they when the knockouts actually show up in the sin bin you're in. You don't want to be there. You don't want to be there. I'm here to tell you, scary business. Um, I have uh, been working with the knockouts now for about a year, and it is some of the most entertaining stuff that I have ever had the, the pleasure to do in the career that I've had uh, doing commentary. Uh, it is a special brand of entertainment that has found its way to Homewood. And now this town has embraced the knockouts. And, you know, whether it be being sponsored by Rabbit Brewing in town, uh, all the sponsors, the, the village, uh, everybody's rallied around. And so far, just about every bout, has had a capacity crowd. Do you two, I'll start with, I'll start with Lunala. When you go there and all those people are sitting in those stands cheering for you, what does that make you feel? Special. Yeah, absolutely special because you are. Homewood loves you and they show it every time you guys fight. Um, Coach Punchline, to be part of something that is, now become part of a community how does that make you feel I feel extremely honored to be a part of that um it's just amazing the amount of people that come out and want to see us skate and have a good time 
it's it's really just like a very good way overwhelming feeling if that makes any sense um yeah in the best possible way just like a, a wonderful like euphoric overwhelming wonderful feeling <laughs> to be a part of all that and just have such support from a community um I think it's just amazing it it really is uh you know I've I've been a a resident uh in these parts for a great many years and uh you know there are a lot of things in Homewood that people love and there are a lot of things that people do but I have never seen an org. I mean, there's been wrestling here in town. There's been this, that, and the other thing, but I've never seen a group like the knockouts capture the imagination of a community where they're getting articles written about them. Uh, you know, they, they got to skate in the, in the, in the parade. Uh, it, it's like they've become a, a, a big important part of what happens in this town and I, I, you wouldn't expect it, but it's so earned because of how hard you all work. It's very impressive. Um, being a, a coach and a skater, uh, when you think about it, having you know come such a, a long way in such a short time, uh, do you feel like you could do this for a long time? Or, you know, how do you, how long do you feel like you could be the, the superstar skater and the, the superstar coach? I don't know about superstar skater, but thank you. <laughs> um, obviously, I mean, I'd love to do this as long as my body will let me as long as I can, as long as I can. Yep. That's a, that's a great answer because we need you. Luna, what are you doing? Are you trying to get our attention? Because if you want a timeout, just ask for Ryan Matthews. We'll get him up here for you. No. All right. What about you? How long do you want to do this? Do you want to skate forever? Do you want to skate for another year? What do you think? Forever. Forever in a day. So someday, Lunala is going to make her debut in the Premier League and light the world on fire. Do you ever hope that you get a chance to skate in competition with your mom? Because wouldn't that be awesome if you and your mom were on the same team? I mean, that would be historic. Yes. How do you how do you think that would feel? I mean, that would be pretty cool, right? Amazing. I mean, you'd be like the Griffies, like Ken Griffey Jr. and Ken Griffey Sr. That was a big deal in baseball. You guys would be the Griffies of roller derby. I don't think she has any clue what you mean. That's I don't okay. I don't think I have any idea what I mean either. I'm trying to make a point, and I'm 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 not doing a good job. I'm working hard though, so that that's we, we'll do our best. It um, can be the Mysterios. Oh, the Myster well, I don't I don't even know if she well, maybe she knows that. How about the Mysterios? Yeah, I know, I know. I watch wrestling. You don't want to be Dominic Mysterio. You don't want to be that. No, no. 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 People won't be able to hear you talk. Um Red, why don't you give these ladies some roses? Because I'd like to hear some roses because they've been wonderful. I already gave roses, Steve. You weren't paying attention clearly. Keep the time <laughs> Get the cotton out your ears. You were talking about passion. Yeah. I'm talking about oh. the roses, damn it. And then you guys wonder why I'm sick today. Um, but we love you and you look great. You got a heart. Punch, I just gave you a heart. Hazel. And I'm calling you Hazel for a reason. You are a light in a dark world. Um, whenever you're around, regardless of what's going on, your energy seems to brighten up the room. Now that you are roller skating, it's a scary thing because this light, I, I'm, I'm fearful of everybody that you hit will see some type of light. Because if you're anything like your mother, they're going to get hit hard. <laughs> but the one thing I do know is don't lose that beautiful smile. You are such a positive young lady. We love to hear stories about you. We ask about you all the time. We love it when you're around. Uh, you are a wonderful young lady. And I am so happy that you are following in mom's footsteps. Uh, and 
it's never because you felt like you had to. It's because you want to. And that's a great thing. When you feel like you make that decision on your own. So you be keep being that great kid you are. Enjoy your time as a kid, but keep enjoying life and keep that beautiful smile, okay? <laughs> All right. What do you say? Thank you. No, oh, you're welcome. Coach Punchy, we have never met. Nope. Yet. <laughs> yet. First of all, you have been smiling since you have got on our campus. Probably nerves. <laughs> nah, it's not. It's not. Time out, time out, time out. I'm sorry. I don't have, I don't have my, my yeah, Riyadh. time. Riyadh, this is your first yeah. time out. You have two more. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But, uh, Miss, uh, Miss Line, uh, I've seen you at Derby. I was a fight ref at the last one. You have no reason to be nervous, like, at all. I'm always I, nervous. I'm always nervous okay. no matter what I'm doing. <laughs> I, I know what I saw. <laughs> Nerves was not, I was fearful at certain points based on what I saw. So I'm just, it's okay. Well, it is thanks. totally okay. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> that's that's all. Sorry, Red. Please continue. Go ahead, Red, continue. Again, I don't think it's nerves. Um, I stated before, you can you can see it in your face. Uh, I believe you can tell about how a person feels about certain things just by looking them in the eye and looking at their expressions on their face. This whole time, uh, you've been smiling. Uh, hearts uh, <laughs> because again the love you have for teaching these young people and then to think oh my god she's only been doing this for basically a few months mm -hmm. yet oh my god here she is and and as uh, Rian has, has stated that uh, you fit right in the rest of the Chicago knockouts. Uh, everybody I've met has been wonderful. So I I know that you are a wonderful young lady. Um, keep that passion. Keep that enthusiasm. Um, hit Steve for me if you ever can. I would I would gladly love to see that. Yes, like punch <laughs> him out. It's not um, even fair. But know that both of you young ladies are awesome. Again, for if nothing else, trying something different, making it work, and loving what you do. All right? More hearts. Way to go, Red. That was lovely. And Rian, that was well-timed as well. Um. Some things I've observed watching these two ladies uh, compete over the years. Hazel, we'll call you Hazel. I, I know you're Lunala, but we're, we'll, since we're at that part of the show, we'll call you Hazel. Um, I've known you now for a minute. And when I get to the show and you're not there, I, I still have fun, but it's not as much fun. There's just something about you that makes things more fun for me. And I don't, I think it's when you're running around trying to beat people up after the show is over. Uh, Cause I really <laughs> enjoy watching that. Uh, especially when you, when you and Andy were having a, a, a pool noodle fight, I really enjoyed that. And what I enjoy about it is you just have so much fun and you have so much energy and you have so much enthusiasm. You're so in the moment and you're so glad to be there. And at such a young age, presence in a moment is is not something that everybody can do. Uh, I think you're a remarkable person, even for a young lady. And I think you're going to be a special talent. What? Even for a young lady? I meant, you know what? Shut up. Don't try to start shit. 
Pardon me. This is a PG. Don't start a start. St Brack. Exactly. We're going to go at it. <laughs> I can't even give a compliment without getting called. Back <laughs> you and I are going to box. Back you and I are going to box, and I'm I'm bigger than you. <laughs> the whole rest is going to clear out. They think they're a demon. <laughs> uh, let's get back to the niceties. I, I what I yeah. meant is for such a young person, you have you have so many great qualities. I think you are going to be an outstanding, outstanding skater for a long time. And I really enjoy watching you perform. I think you're great. And I hope you do great things. Know that you have our undying support and watching you and Andy just interact together are some of my favorite things. I love the way you two are. It really is good. It really is fun. And I hope you always smile. Because you should always smile. Because you deserve it. Thanks. You're welcome. As for Coach Punchline, when you said you had only been doing this for a few months, I I can't believe it. I, I refuse to believe it. Now, I know you said you were a figure skater, and that's fine. I have seen many skaters in the knockouts. And my job as commentator is to watch what's going on and try to describe the chaos. You have such a presence when you're on there. Um, you know, there there are skaters that have, some, you know, some skaters have more presence than others. But when you're out there moving around, people are looking for you. People are watching you because you're dynamic at what you do. And, you know, everybody skates really well. The knockouts, there's not one knockout, I think, that isn't incredible at what they do. But there are knockouts that, are there's just this it you know even in wrestling you know characters there's a character has it and you can see it and you watch it and you watch you watch the crowd respond uh when you would come on the floor the crowd gets excited and they respond to you and that's not something you can learn or teach that's something you either have or you don't uh so i can't wait to see if you're this good now i can't wait to see what happens as the year goes on and into next year because, you know, you could be just rocking things on that. That I mean, you you take on the toughest competitors and you don't flinch or blink. And that's badass. So uh, I hope you keep doing this for a long time because you're incredibly entertaining. And we appreciate effort. And you are all effort. And that you can't teach either. So please keep doing what you're doing. And please stay a knockout because I think you're extraordinary. I absolutely will. Um, I, like everybody, like I said, everybody around me inspires me. So just getting to skate with people, you know, like Cactus, like Juice, like Crimson, like Marley, like everybody that's just so like, they just fill me up with energy and I just feed off of that. So it makes me want, it's just, it's just the fun, you know, like I know it's, it's, it's important to like, you know, get through, be a good jammer, go fast and all this stuff, like all this little tiny nitpicky things that sort of eat away at you. But for me, I just want to have fun and do a good job. And like I said, I just feed off of everybody. So if I'm out there jamming against juice, I want to catch her. I want to be as fast as her. And then I want to beat her. <laughs> Ooh, so I think, good because yeah. you're on here a little bit later. I know interested that to, to to have you say that while she's here because that would be pretty cool That's i will and i said it to her face before too that she's just such an inspiration like she is somebody that i want to be able to be in the next like two three you know however long it takes because she's you know extremely fast extremely like quick and she does it well. So, you know, I just look up to all my teammates, like I said before, just all the little tiny pieces I can pull from each of them and just keep growing. You, uh, you are on the road to, uh, a, a pretty impressive career. That is no doubt. I want to ask you a question away from roller derby. <laughs> um, I've been listening to you tonight, listening to you answer, listening to you talk. Have you ever been a teacher in your personal life? Because you, you just have this this presence that you you would do well in that kind of vocation. I don't know what it is about you. Uh, no, I've never been a teacher. I've never coached until minors. Um, Amazing. So I work, I work with a lot of attorneys. So maybe that's why, like, I need to talk to them. <laughs> and, like, 
There's a fun. certain way, maybe, but <laughs> that now that makes all the sense in the world. That makes all the yeah. sense. <laughs> um now that you're here in, in, in the Derby and now that you're you're in, kind of an established person, um when 2024 starts, uh what about the new, you said new year, new you when we started. So every year it's new year, new me. I'm going to do something this year that's going to be different. Do you have something in store for roller derby in 2024? I know you want to get better. I know you want to, I know all that, but you know, there's, there's got to be something in size that I'm going to kick her ass or I'm going to do this. What do you think in 20, what do you see for punchline in 2024? I see lots more jamming um, and getting better at just like blocking. I think that's my, my main goals for 2024 and just kick, kick ass harder. (laughs) It's such a cool character punchline. It's such an underrated character in the world of the comics. Uh, Mm -hmm. What about that character in that world made you want to bring her to the derby um so i've i've always been a big comic fan and like i have a marley or a harley marley uh and joker on my arm and everything so i've I've always been a big fan of comic books and stuff and i know um when i first heard about her she came out i think they they presented her during the pandemic and sort of as like this like wild like assassin wants to like impress joker and like take over gotham city sort of thing but like i don't know it's just just the the vibes that she gave me when i first read the first few comics that she was in um i don't know it just kind of spoke to me and i was like what if i put this girl on skates and just be a clown (laughs) and it was fun and i had a good time and i think the first time i skated as punchline i was like this is this is who i am this is what i what i am yeah i think i think the character's find you you don't necessarily find them and uh it, it mm-hmm. seems a perfect uh matchup um you're a big comic book fan uh obviously aside from punchline what do you read what do you watch what do you like marvel dc both uh more of a dc kind of person i love like the the new harley quinn show that's out on i think it's hbo max or whatever they call it now <laughs> um big fan of lego batman big fan of lego batman and batman movies um i don't know just just the whole i love cosplaying and stuff so it's a lot of fun did you say you're a fan of lego batman yeah (laughs) yeah that that that's amazing will arnett is amazing anyway um did you see the flash movie i didn't didn't see it yet i did not now here's another question and and this is just purely for my own interest who's your batman Who's my Batman? Everybody has a Batman. I don't know. This We're going to ask everybody on this board. I want to know who your Batman is. Uh, there have been many actors that have played Batman over the years. Mm-hmm. But he has a Batman. And I'm just interested, who has been your favorite Batman in cinema or on television or in anime? I mean, you know, a lot of people go with Kevin Conroy as their favorite Batman. Uh, yeah, but- I'm a big fan of... Uh, of uh, Bruce Timm's Batman or and that whole Batman drawing world. I can't remember who the actor is who plays like in the animated series, but I think that's my favorite one. Otherwise, I didn't hate Christian Bale. It was fine. <laughs> Not a big fan of Rob Pattinson as Batman, to be honest, but you know. Or with him. Did you like Batfleck? Oh, I don't know what that is. Uh, that's Ben Affleck being Batman. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, no, not a fan. I also like don't like Ben Affleck generally so i couldn't i couldn't like wired take oh whoa register oh register took offense easy red don't have the big one here <laughs> i'm, I'm sure sorry. the skew universe she would she would be okay with ben affleck there that's gotta be about right right you know ben affleck you know come on now mall rats uh you know In more dogma Dogma, but yeah, oh. but he was he was the perfect jerk in Mallrats. He was indeed a jerk in Mallrats, that's for sure. All right. <laughs> uh, Lunala, do you like Batman? Yes. Who is your favorite Batman? 
I'm not sure because I haven't seen most of the Batman movies. Do you watch? Is there any Batman that you watch that you like? I haven't watched Batman lately. So a, I, I still haven't gotten to your character. We're gonna get to your character in a minute. Uh, Red, who's your Batman? Michael Keaton. He's mine too. For a long time, I was Adam West because I was a huge. I fan. mean, Adam West is who we we who introduced us to Batman. But Michael Keaton was to me the perfect mis- mixture of Batman and Bruce Wayne. Indeed, indeed. Mm-hmm. Funny story about Adam West. When I was a child, I obviously we all watched Batman when I was a kid. And every time Batman would punch somebody, it would be pow or blam or zip or whatever. So I just thought that's how fighting worked. So <laughs> I want the blam come up when I hit something. So I punched my younger brother right in the face. And <laughs> there was no bam. There was no bam at all. Uh, it was a bedtime and uh, no dinner that night. Don't other and expect Bam. That's a that's a that's a PSA right now. But <laughs> that kid that loved the six million dollar man and ran around in slow motion in his backyard, and the neighbors thought there was something wrong with me. So it you know that childhood that's a whole thing. But that's neither here nor there. Uh, Pat Pat PX, what's your Batman? So if we're going the cartoons, definitely Conroy. He's the first one to use a distinct Bruce Wayne voice and the Batman voice. And that's kind of carried over into Batman portrayals after that. I'm a huge Batman fan. Um, I would say, though, my like definitive like live action Batman. That's tough. Uh, I would say oh, Bale. Make sure you make a good choice. Uh, Christian Bale. Okay. So even with the goofy Batman voice, I feel like he took that character to a different level with those movies. He got saved by an incredible performance by Heath Ledger. That That's what made that Batman work. Um, Rian, you're offering uh, as far as your favorite Batman? We'll get back to Rian. Uh, we asked. Uh, we asked Punchline. Get back to you know what? I'll do it this way. Val Kilmer. Val Kilmer. You're lying. Because nobody in ever has said that. You can go ahead and argue about that all you want. Just Val Kilmer. That'll it's, work. Val Kilmer. I, 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 I'll take. I'll take Val Kilmer. As long as he didn't say George Clooney. He was about to say George Clooney just to mess with me. That's what we're gonna we're gonna divert from the Batman talk. Although we could do this for all night. Uh, Coach Punchy brought a comic book character to life and <coughs> amazing in roller derby. You are Lunala and you're a dragon. Tell us how you got your character and why it's important to you. So. I created my character myself. I didn't get any, like, ideas. I just was obsessed with dragons. And so the name came from a Pokemon, though. Okay. Tell us about this Pokemon. The Pokemon is the le- is legendary. And it's from Alola region. It's in... It's gold... It has its wings are the night are starry nights, and its eye is a giant red stone. Wait, let me get the sign that was made for her for the bow. Yes, there was a whole sign. Somebody made you a sign. Did did P is that Lunala? Did PX find her? Yes, that is Lunala. Oh, ah. it's a sign. Somebody made that sign for you? Yeah. That sign's amazing. How did that make you feel? Who made you that sign? I don't know. You have fans. Oh, my God. That's amazing. You are a superstar. So what about this magical beast and that name and your obsession with dragon? How did you 
what were you, how did you come up with the wings and all that? What did, what what was in your mind when you made this character? Because that's really cool. So, that- at the time, me and mom were watching Xena. Or your princess? Yeah. Oh my god, I love that show. Yes. Oh. <laughs> Lucy Lawless. A moment. And so I decided to combine Lunala's name, my love of dragons, Xena, and a few other characters into one. And I created Lunala that I skate as. And it's a complicated story. I've been writing it during school. Lunala has a story? Yeah. I am very intrigued to read this story. And Sogoleo is the other half of the Alolan legendaries. And that's your best friend, right? Yeah. So Sogo on the skating team, she wanted to be my partner in crime when she joined. And she made her entire outfit for the bout the day before. Or uh, no, the morning of. Hey, no shade, no shade. That's still amazing, though. That's really impressive. Yeah. That's really she impressive. Outfit together at the last minute. <laughs> Which outfit was that? Plenty of them. <laughs> I'm totally going to call you Lunala Warrior Princess at the next bout. Well, she's not a princess anymore. She's a queen. Okay, warrior queen then. That's fine. I, I've watched, I've I've seen every Xena episode and every Hercules episode ever. I am very familiar with those characters. And she has, so here's a summary of her. Lunala is the warrior queen of the moon. And her she is enemies with um, the sun, even though Sogaleo is from the sun. This is foreshadowing, I, I think. No, it's not. Okay. So, me and Sogo, Lunala and Sogo are sisters. They have a little sister named Candy. Candy. And one day, Lunala is down on Earth, and a giant star fell on top of her and corrupted her with dark magic. Wow, magic. Yeah. What wait, dark magic? But you're yeah. you're a hero. How did what, what's this dark magic business? So basically now she has a pet dog who's also Cerberus. Cerberus, the three headed dog? Yeah. Hercules and Zena fight that dog. I don't want to fight that dog. And she can raise the dead. <laughs> well, hey, Coach Punchline, you if they can raise the dead, you might be okay if, if somebody gets injured during a bout. You can just have them cast the spell to bring them back. I mean, that's all I could ask for. <laughs> <laughs> we got we got magic and, and dark magic at that. This is... I, I don't know. Now I'm questioning if I want to go and be a part of dark magic. That could go badly for me. <laughs> Love the necromancy. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I'm gonna wear. I'm gonna wear a, a a shotgun or no. I'm gonna wear a chainsaw and be ash. That that's the only way I'm gonna get through this because that's you know that's yeah, my. So, Lunala was the princess when that happened, and her mother, the queen of the sun. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mom, don't laugh at me. <laughs> I love the fact that she didn't gave this real thought for us. This is a uh, this is this is I this is story like I mean we should I hope the wrestling people watch this show and because our you, fire, that's all on time call on time out call on time out oh, call on a time out Rian this is your second time out you have one more I I'm only going to mention this because of me listening to everything. The the idea of wonder that she has, and not just her logistics, but just how time works in general, <laughs> is absolutely fascinating to me when she's explaining this story. She has probably been thinking about this for 25 years, and it's shrunk it down to like two days at school. 
like, the idea. Like just listening to this, like I I wow. Wow. But my I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go away now. I'm gonna go away. You you just you you made Rion see. I think what's going to happen at IPW now is that some of these stories that you've told tonight are going to find their way into the wrestling ring because I see dark magic coming to IPW at some point. But I here's don't the let any wrestlers take any of my ideas. That's I have right. a sword and I'm not afraid to use it. That's uh, right. But think about what she's done. She has put so much thought and creativity into her character, right? But yet, every weekend, you ask somebody, hey, so what's your character? Uh, uh, I just do a whole lot of flippy stuff. No character. No character. Like, no character whatsoever. And here's this young lady that has just started her journey and can probably write a book about her character. Yet there are grown men that can't tell you what their character is. You know who she reminds me of, Red? You know who she reminds me of? Andy. That is, because I, I, listen, I just had to spend about 10 hours in a car with Andy. I now know way too much. <laughs> you know, I have way too much information about Duke Laser Fist and <coughs> guises. So, uh, somewhere, that like an insult, Steve. What now? That sounds like an insult. That's not. That's I couldn't be more praising. I think Andy's a genius. I think Andy. I think Andy is is on the road to glory. I, I think. But I, I'm my, gonna claim, I am going to claim something here. She got that that creative storytelling gene from me. Well, you are the queen of the book. Yes. Go ahead, right. Rian. Pick up your pick up the phone. Oh, my, I I was just going to say is how how can saying someone having a creative mind be an insult? If anything, they should be paid. Because let's face it, there are people out there now that are on a corporate level that are being paid a lot of money to write nothing to the point. <laughs> like, it is ugh. just the idea of having someone that still has the idea of wonder. There's one thing when a child still has it. When you're an adult and you still have it, that's e even better. So that that is that is far from a, from it being an insult. Far from. Hazel is afraid to tell you that she has to go to the bathroom, and she'll be right back. So just tell us. I... <laughs> <laughs> that is not okay. I would have been okay if she just left, and you didn't have to tell us that. But anyway, here we are. Um, she wasn't going. That's the thing. She kept mouthing it to me. <laughs> Um, Coach Punchline, do you have any experience in the world of professional wrestling? Have you ever watched it? Does it is it anything that's even on your radar? Uh, not really a whole lot. I had some friends. What's that? That's okay. That's okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, I... there are people here that are wrestlers, and then there's me. Um, but it's it's you know, we're we're coming at things from a wrestling standpoint, but we have all decided that we feel like any of the knockouts at any time could step into a wrestling ring and be fantastic at it. Probably. <laughs> Probably. I like when I, when I was a kid, I was going to shows and stuff and I was like 14 and 15, just like local shows. And then some friends from there did like backyard wrestling. So that's, that's it. <laughs> that's all I know. <laughs> oh, that's fine. Uh, yeah. Every now and again, uh, you know, the knockouts come out, and they do wrestling stuff with us. Maybe the next time uh, the knockouts come out, maybe Punchline comes out and uh, tries her hand at the squared circle. I would not be opposed to it. I'd give it a go. Rian, you heard that, right? <laughs> Rian is our information liaison. So the more he hears, the more he knows, the more it gets done properly. Oh, um, man. So now it's on record, huh? <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll hold you to this. I'm going to say, remember when you said this? Um, 
Riyadh has put up the graphic of uh, the comic book crushers versus the horrific haunters. Um, you are a crusher, obviously, punchline. Um, when 2024 starts, are you coming back as a member of the crushers? Absolutely. Yep. That's and you're, my, my home. <laughs> that's your home. Um, so you have a, you have a, a, a conflicting situation and you're not going to be there. Uh, I, I too have a, a conflicting situation and it bums me out that I don't get to, to be a part of the last two shows of the year because it's been such a great journey. Um, there was a show that we had uh, a few months ago, uh, where the fans got to buy points and buy themes. Have you ever been a part of anything like that? No, <laughs> that was so much fun. So much fun. I mean, that, that two hours went by in a blink because it was absolute chaos. Yeah. <laughs> and and, it, and the, re, the rules are changing and you're skating backwards. Tell me your experience with a show that essentially had no rules, rhyme, or reason. <laughs> well, we tried to do like every other one as like a fun, like, uh, you know, skate, but um, I've never done anything like that before, aside from like an ice show, for example, where it's just like whatever. But this kind of thing was so much fun, just like the pool noodles and like absolutely, it was just chaos. It was absolute chaos, but so fun. <laughs> It was uh, unlike anything I've ever seen. And uh, Rion's put up the picture of him getting beaten up by Lucille Brawl and Marley Quinn. Uh, yep. As I'm looking on, uh, calling the action, he's the first fight ref I've ever seen that's been just completely taken out and down uh, by a, a couple of uh, of derby skaters. So that was a, it was a tough night at the office for Rion's skills. <laughs> There's yeah. the the sin bin that was not a great moment for me uh but that's that's okay that's what we do um as a figure skater and I, i'm interested in this exactly how long did you figure skate um i started when i was three and i stopped when i was 16 i think i couldn't even really walk proper when i was three how did they, you're skating at three I wrote a, I wrote it. Okay. So apparently, and I vaguely remember, but I was also like two, my mom tells me that I rode a two wheel bike when I was two years old. The story goes is my dad was trying to put the, like the, you know, goofy wheels onto it. And I'm like, no. And he's like, what? She's going to die. And my mom's like, just let her fall. So I took the thing and I two wheeled, you know, <laughs> myself down the driveway. So I never had training wheels. I don't know. <laughs> That might make you the chosen one. I think you're like <laughs> Derby and Skywalker. <laughs> off the chart. Steve. Yes. So my so I'm doing a program at my school, IMSA. And my IMSA teacher's son, before he was in kindergarten, could do middle school to high school math. Oh my gosh. I'm an old and man. And then went to IMSA High School. That's a, that's crazy. That's Doogie Howser. Yeah, that's... <laughs> how old is this person that could do math at that age? I think he said he was like 21. I, I, is he like... Is he is he Steve Jobs? Or I don't know. If he was Steve Jobs, he'd be dead. Oh, that's that's fair. fair. I threw <laughs> before I said it. Moving on. <laughs> Open mouth, insert foot. Um, so you started skating at three and, and the Doogie Hauser picture, of course, naturally, um, you started skating at three and did you do like ice shows? Were you like a competitive skater? What kind of, I mean, tell, tell us about that, that life. Yeah. So kind of funny parallels is I, I skated, I started skating in Homewood, which is kind of funny at that I'm ice back. Around. Yep. <laughs> Very familiar. Yeah. Busted my butt yeah. there. <laughs> so it's kind of funny that I started my skating career at HF Ice Arena and I restarted a different kind of skating career in HF again. Um, but yeah, so I started when I was three. I competitive figure skated until I was like 16. So I did do like the ice shows and stuff that like Homewood would put on and that sort of thing. But I would do a lot of competitions and that we were traveling all the time. So it was a lot of fun. Did you ever have aspirations for like the Olympics or something like that? Sure did. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, no, I would have, the goal, the goal was always to get to the Olympics, but it's, it's just with skating and, and, you know, gymnastics, any type of sport like that, once you're past a certain age and you're not, you know, at a certain level that you maybe should be at that time to reach that Olympic level, then it kind of just is like, I'm not going to get there. I have to face face facts that I'm not going to do the Olympics, but I can damn well skate really good. <laughs> that, I mean, when that moment hit you, was that, I mean, that had to have been crushing for something. Oh you- yeah. I still, yeah. I still like to this day, can't like I, when I go into the ice arena just to go like in the winter time or whenever um, I, I still cry. I still cry walking in the ice rinks. It's wild. That's, that is, uh, well, I mean, you give your heart and your soul to something and it, it, right. it that's, uh, that, so do you still ice skate frequently? Um, sometimes not too often, not too often though. You were on skates at an ice arena. Um, probably like, well, honestly, last year, last year, November, I, I threw myself a birthday party. <laughs> And I rented the ice arena, like the little, the little smaller rink. So I rented it for myself and just invited some friends to go, go skate with me. So yeah, almost a year ago, That's but a- I have different skates now. So I, uh, I- <laughs> go ahead. No, no, that's it. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, do you, have you ever tried to skate in hockey skates? No. <laughs> when we, we see, I went to home with Flossmore. So we had an ice skating that was a class in gym. Yeah. I had to go to the ice arena and they would teach us how to skate. And I was always made fun of because I could not stand up in hockey skates. Couldn't stand up, couldn't skate in them. So I had to yeah. wear brown leather figure skates that had the little teeth on the front. Yeah. Now, yeah I mean, I, I wouldn't call it skating. I could hobble around a, in a circle pretty effectively, but you know, I wouldn't necessarily call it skating. But I could not stand up in in hockey skates and I've always wanted to talk to an ice skater why what what they seemed like they were so different what the hell I think if I'm not wrong their edges like the edges are different so and you have the toe obviously to like kind of stabilize yourself kind of like roller skates like you have your toe stop and you can stabilize yourself there even though you're on four it's easier than one um but ice skates like the the blade itself kind of curves in like that and I want to say that hockey skates do that too, but it's not as dramatic. It's more like rounded and they don't, and it, their skates are more round like this in the front and the back where ours are more straight. I still have trauma about that to this day. It's weird. Um, yeah. Lunala, have you ever ice skated? No. Yeah, you have. I have? <laughs> <laughs> no. I pulled you up the whole time and you were like four. What now? I don't remember anything. I have a picture of it where you look like a three-year-old Kurt Cobain. <laughs> I'll find it. I'll send it to Rian when I get my phone back. No! You <laughs> read that picture. He's going to out you. It's going to be great. Um. Well, you, you've got uh, Coach Punchy now, who is an established ice skater. Maybe she'll throw another birthday party this year and invite you to skate. We can do that, for or- sure. <laughs> What we'll do is we'll do a power hour skating party and we'll all <laughs> I'll come down to Homewood and we'll all skate. <laughs> That'd be fun. <laughs> but I, I haven't put ice skates on in many a decade. So I imagine that would be funny just unto itself, be trying to to do that again. I don't know how I feel about that. Maybe that was a bad they have, idea. They have those like walker things you can use now. Because <laughs> that that will make it all better for me. <laughs> Here, I'm just, I, I like I'm, I'm dreading the walker in my own life personally. <laughs> I want to, I want to embody that on skates. That would yeah. be horrid. Yeah. <laughs> I can chill. That's not great. Um, Pretty soon coach juice will join us. Uh, I I've had you a long time and I, I hope you're not bored, uh, but I find your, your, your story fascinating. And obviously uh, we have been enthralled with Lunala's tales of her creation. Um, but I, I do to finish. Oh, I'm well, let's go. Hey, I'm all ears, girl. So, the Queen of the Sun, Lunala's mom, wasn't happy about her being corrupted by the dark magic. And so, casted her off to the moon. Why the moon? Because I don't know. Just the moon. 
I mean, it's it's out there. Why not? So Lunala decided to sneak into the palace one day and steal the royal sword, which is the sword I used in my bouts, by the way. That's the royal sword. The royal sword that I have corrupted <laughs> with my magic. Red, she's got magic. Hey, man, be quiet. I'm listening to the story. <laughs> and then... So Galeo doesn't want to live on the sun anymore because of Lunala's mother. So she moves to Earth with Candy. And um, then Lunala decides to seek revenge and decides to start a war and that lasts until this day and continues. Wow, it's it's a story of war, of revenge. I mean, this is very Shakespearean. L Lunala is not happy. Your mom really has rubbed off on you. Rachel I've already about this stuff. She didn't hear you. Rachel, how does she what? know revenge and war? No, don't put the camera on me. Mom! Literally in my granny dress. Let's see it. No. <laughs> but you're so pretty. I want to see it. No. Okay, fine. You can see it. All right. Yeah. It's my granny dress. Oh I my got God. It. It's so cute. It's got, the ball from our... it's got pockets. Bell of the ball. Oh, yeah. Okay. What's the question? Does this young, angelic child know about revenge and war? <laughs> We watched a lot of Xena. I mean, what do you want? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I raised her to like for like revenge and war, but I've always surrounded her by strong female role models, and you know, not shied away from what I like to call feminine rage. So, you know, to be a woman is an act of rebellion. Steve, get your foot out of my face. <laughs> <laughs> be a woman is an act of rebellion. Is that what you said? Yes, it is. Would you care to expound on that? I think I it speaks for itself. I think you're probably right. I just uh, didn't know if you had more to say. Um, now, I have lots to say, but this isn't about me. So, and, But I do have one more question for you, if you would indulge me. Your God was. <laughs> How proud are you of this amazing young woman? I am extremely proud of her. It's been like a full circle year for us. Um, so this is the year she started skating derby. And earlier this year is when um, we found out that she had her first normal EEG since she was three. And so I think a lot of her life and our lives in the last few years have been defined by epilepsy and working around epilepsy in school and in life. She had to stop doing gymnastics because of it. And so watching her kind of reclaim everything that it took from her, I couldn't be prouder. Oh, that's so nice. Uh, now I've got another question. We were talking about this a little bit before we started. Uh, let's hear the story of Major the Chicken Nugget. Oh, <laughs> what? It's a, a Every, dog we rescued. Me, I was running out there with a you. burger while Andrew was driving and you were at home. He went by and was gonna eat. Yes, I took it. I used some dog Tell Tell the fans the story of Major the Chicken Nugget. It's a story of heroism. It's a story of rescue. It's a story of rebirth. It's a story, it's a story of, of not getting any sleep because <laughs> our dog went nuts because there was another dog. In the <laughs> context: the people aren't under, the people don't know. Okay, Hazel, do you want me to tell the story since I was there? Yeah. Okay. So Andy and I went to the gym last night. Keep it on yourself. I don't want to be on camera. They need to be able to hear 
you. Um, we went to the gym last night and, you know, um, you know, you get hungry after the gym. So we decided to stop at the McDonald's uh, over here by where we live in Crete. And so there's a couple of roads that have been shut down for a bit. So normally we just drive straight out to 394 when we leave McDonald's and take that home. But there's a frontage road right there. And for some reason, Andrew decided he's turning down this road. I'm like, okay, I guess we'll see where we end up because there's no throughway over here. And as we're driving, this little animal comes straight down the middle of the road towards us. He thought it was a bunny. I realized it was a chihuahua. And I get out of the car with his burger <laughs> and chase this dog all around an auto dealership parking lot um, and eventually lured him in. He was tiny. He was shaking. He was sitting on my shoulder. Um, both of our dogs acted ridiculous because neither one of them knows their own strength and they think everybody wants to play all the time. And so we had to hide. We call him Chicken Nugget because I was eating Chicken Nuggets at the time. Um, we called him Chicken Nugget. You named him after. We found out that his name is Major um, because he had been lost from the gas station next to the McDonald's where we had stopped to get food. Um, so we had a very long night because my dogs, Bruce and Rosie, both wanted to get into the room and almost clawed our uh, almost clawed our doors down. And then he was he's a body heat dog. So Andrew, so he slept up here. He slept upstairs with me, like curled up in my legs. Andrew had to sleep on the couch with the dogs to keep them calm. Um, and then his mommy came in the morning and got him. He got lost all the way from Chicago. So you are a hero to the kids. And speaking of heroes to the kids, joining us right now live on the Power Hour is none other than Coach Beaterjuice. Coach, how are you? Hi, everyone. Juice, Hello. juice, juice, <laughs> Sorry, juice. Mate. Yay. We have been grilling Coach Punchline about rivalries. And I feel like now, since you two are coaching against each other, perhaps in the Premier League, maybe Punchline and Beater Juice will develop a rivalry as well, because we love rivalries on this show. Yeah, I mean, uh, we already have a rivalry going when we're on the damn line. Uh, so that's working there. Um, but yeah, uh, there's uh, there's more rivalries. Rivalry, I can't even say the word right now. I'm just getting out of the pool, sorry. Um, to come up, I think, um, uh, I think especially as like the minors are getting more into themselves and their characters, it's making us coaches and even with the announcers coming out Perfect. to do more too. So it's pretty cool. That is amazing. Um, So the minors bout and, and as the minors, I mean, they've had, I think this is their, this was their third show. I think this was the third bout. There's a second one. I must have. Yeah. Which one are you counting? I, <laughs> I thought there was one way back in the summer and then there yeah. was, so was that the first one? That was the first one. And then the second one was the one last Saturday. Okay. So you've been a coach at both of them, correct? Yeah. So, so talk, say the pictures. Talk, <laughs> talk to us about being a coach. What does that mean to you? Um, Being a coach, I'll talk about juniors. I think, um, sorry, they're probably, I think they're playing Ghostbusters in the background, which is hilarious. Um, uh, I think one of the best things that came out this weekend, at, um, so like when we start to, before the bout, us adults, we go into our dungeon part of our building with our skates on, we walk down the stairs because, you know, we're adults, If we'll take the liability. But with the juniors, they have to stay up top on, in the auditorium. So we were like, at the last minute, I've kind of forgot where to put them before the bout started, before they do their skate outs. This comes back to coaching. So we stuck them in the back stairwell area, okay? Now you think it's a tight space. It's really, you know, 
I want to say that there's some videos that came out from that time period before the bout when they're just back in there bonding between our brawlers and our scrappers. I think that was probably one of the highlights of the bout for me because like, and Punchy, you know, can speak to this too, because they're, it's not just about being the most brilliant skater on the track and you can't motivate your teammates. You are nothing without your teammates there. Like, and right, Luna, like if you're sad or like something's going on and you have your teammates around, it makes it so you can do it better than you would have maybe without them. So like behind the scenes, you see like, um, what was it? Donnie Rotten was there leading in uh, We Will Rock You. Yeah. And he's in the back singing, we will. And all the, the juniors are like stamping their feet, going along singing, we will rock you. Well, I'm out trying to get the crowd riled up. So what's it mean to be a coach? It's those moments, I think, when you see them really like connect and really start to get it. Um, I think we're seeing in our practices, they're in taking what they're seeing from us adults and they're really starting to apply it on the track. So as a coach, like, I'm trying not to cry right now because like it's one of those moments when you can see like um, them really start to get that they have to trust each other and then trust that those moments are those are the moments that we want. It's not that I want you to go through the jam and get the most po possible points. It's Donnie Rotten leading. We will rock you to get the my other miners as pumped up as he is. So if that makes sense. It makes total sense because we were talking earlier, the, it seems like the main objective of the knockouts, as I have seen it, is the camaraderie and the family that the knockouts are with each other, whether they're going against each other, whether it's at the after party, it's such a, a tight knit, close quarter group of people. It's just amazing to watch the interactions between the skaters and if that trickles down to the minors boy the future of the knockouts is in great hands yeah i definitely think that um we're in great hands because of the minors um they yeah they definitely have just a different um they're starting to get it so like i don't know how to say it but they're buying, they're drinking the Kool-Aid, if that makes sense. So like not to go into like some, you know, religious cultish thing, but they're drinking the Kool-Aid. And I think that them buying in makes us adults be like, well, if they're buying in, I'm, all, I'm bought in too. And like, it's a reminder of like to stay engaged. Um yeah and, and to to keep doing what we're doing that what we're doing is working i guess and so it's not it's it is cko i think like having a family and people that we can trust but it is to get better we want to get better on the track luna wants to take out i saw her face uh during that bout i know there's a couple of people on red that she wanted to go after and take out right especially so, adam yeah yeah i know i don't want to say it, but it, specifically adams right so I think it's it's good because Luna gets better from wanting to do that. And she's tougher because I see her out there and she's on the jam line and she's just like, like ready to go. And that's what we want, right, Punchy? Like, you know, and and I think, you know, Cactus too, like, to, you know, she wants to, we would want to see our, our, our kids to like have that um, belief in themselves to say like, I'm on this jam line. Not only am I going to score points, but I'm going to take you down, Adams. Right, Luna? Mm -hmm. See? So I think that's what we try to foster. We know that we can do it like Punchy and I, but they take it, the way that they take it, I don't know, Punchy, if you agree, but the way that they take it and they performed on Saturday makes me be want, want to be a better skater and to do more of what they did. Oh, yeah. They, they have such passion. It's like just oozes out of them. Absolutely. Every single one of them. Mm-hmm. So you're teaching them, you know, how to do this and how to, how to, you know, the, the, the nuance of roller derby, but at the same time, they're kind of teaching you to don't forget to have some fun and enjoy what you're doing. Maybe. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so like for, for minors, right. Um, 
we've got our 10 commitments, right? And so the number one rule, Luna, is don't be a jerk, right? Yeah. So number one rule. It's amazing how many adults violate this rule, but right, Luna, isn't it a great rule? Yeah. yeah. And so we hold each other accountable. Rule number 10 is hold me accountable and I will hold you accountable. And then like somewhere in like four or five is I will respect myself and I respect my team. And then the other ones are like, uh, you can say sorry, but you can say sorry once. That's it. And then you have to forgive yourself and move on or ask the other person for forgiveness and then move on. So we are teaching them how to be better skaters on the track, but not just technically and points wise, but also to be that person that a good teammate. So, uh, yeah. And then number two rule is honor thy character. <laughs> we were, we, you, we spent almost a half an hour. Uh, Luna was dazzling us with her character and its story. It was pretty amazing. Oh, I'm going to have to rewatch this because she and her friends have some characters I'm learning more and more about all the time, especially when we make signs and we're like, what, 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 what's, what's the, why do they have some of the names that they do? You know, Sogolo, Sogolo and, um, Sogaleo. You'll, you'll get all the story you want if you rewatch this. She, so we don't need to talk about it anymore because I'll rewatch it. It's pretty, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool indeed. Um, that's something that I have I have noticed uh, as doing commentary is how important the characters are in the world of the knockouts because you get into character so deeply and it resonates so well with the crowd. Um, in wrestling, you know, characters are important, but I, I feel like you know not every wrestler has a good hold on their character, but I feel like when I, I watch the knockouts, you are so into your characters that when you're on that track and you're skating around, you cease being who you are in the day to day and you become the embodiments of these characters for that two hour period of time. How do you feel about that? Hard. Uh, I think, I think, and uh, we were talking with the, the miners, the, brawlers and scrappers uh in the last week about this too luna correct me if i'm wrong how we are so different because not only do we need to be athletes we have to be actors out there so you have to do what we're skating in character so it's not just like actors you see on the tv and you have wrestlers you know this you have to do what you're doing in character so it's not what i would do it's what beater juice would do and beater juice is so annoying that so I have, yeah, all right, they're all laughing. Yeah, I, it's so <laughs> annoying. So what you're saying is true. If I want to stay as beater juice and Lunala wants to stay as Lunala, we have to stay in that the whole time. And it's it's hard. It's exhausting. Afterwards, punchy, like afterwards, it's like, whoosh, and then afterwards, I'm like, go away. I need quiet. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I need a moment by myself. Luna, do you agree? Yes. Yeah. How are you after the bout? It was, you were really in character at the bout. Yeah. Donnie grabbed my, one of my fingers wrong and it hurt for like three days. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's right. You're pinky, right? Yeah. Oy. That's okay. I got Ricky pretty good and she has a bruise for like three weeks at this point. So <laughs> it does happen, but that's how you know your best friends is they leave you marks. <laughs> it's all out of love. It's, it's, it's but a, a mark of yeah. uh it was so like to that um i was having a conversation with other other miners who was having like uh issues luna you won't believe who i'm talking about i'm talking about trauma queen and trauma queen was telling me how he's having a hard time hitting uh feels super uncomfortable so i took him after practice and i was like come here so I'll show you what I do with my best friend, Ricky, when we get bored or we just start hanging out. So we get on the track and I just start hitting trauma and I just try to hit him down. And he's like, wait, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm just having fun. <laughs> I got you. And so then he comes after me to try to hit me and trying to explain that, like that in order to be a competitive person doesn't mean that you have to have all the points at the end of the bout. The most competitive person might be for me, for minors, Luna, right, is the person that is entertaining the crowd the most. 
that's that's the most competitive person on the team right because even if we score all the points if the bout was boring like who's gonna care as much and that's where we're different from other roller derby teams too is like we have this other component where we just aren't only worried about the points so with all that being said with with trauma queen it's just trying to reframe that maybe it's not the points at the end of the bout but how the fans feel feel when they're leaving the stadium if they felt like they got entertained that they went ah, ooh, ah, ah. like and so my character is and luna right like our characters have to be engaging and to do that which is totally another thing rather than just being a athlete on the track so they're learning how to do that now and trying to feel also that like in life, I don't mean to talk to you so long, but to take that a step further. So Luna and me and Punchy, when we have a bad day in Cactus, maybe I can't get through that day as Pam, but I can get through that day as Beater Juice, I bet. Just to take a little bit of that personality with. So again, like, I know there's a couple of different points in there, but hopefully like Luna, would you agree? Like sometimes we need to like pull from that a part where it's not necessarily, it's still us. It's just this other part. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, Punchy, like I've pulled that out during the day sometimes if meetings and stuff, try not to be so obnoxious like beater juice, but at least be like, no, I'm not, I'm good guys. We're going to do this, you know, and just try to own a little bit more of that. Yeah. It's like, it's like your extra self, you know, like it's still you, but it's your like more extra person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they need to be in the corner for a little bit on a timeout, but most of the time. <laughs> so I yeah. appreciate that because there's a, I'm super tired after the bout um, because oh, yeah. I'm constantly looking. And if someone doesn't look like they're having a good time or they look bored, that's when I'm like, Whoop, I blast on and I do, and I grab punchy or Marley flips me and, or I find Luna in the stands and I'm like, whoop, 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 you know, like, yeah. The fans in Homewood have really taken to roller derby uh, in, in a very personal way. Um, I was telling everybody earlier that I was at uh, a reunion Saturday night uh, for my high school class, and we're at a local establishment in Homewood. And the most asked question I had from not only the people that I was with, but people that overheard what we were talking about, they know the knockouts. The knockouts are something that that people are, are aware of. And they're asking me all these questions. When's the next bout? What's happening? When, where can I buy tickets? So in Homewood, it is such a part of the community now. You guys are so entrenched in part of, of what makes this community special. And by the end of the night, uh, we're doing another reunion next year, and they want to do the reunion at about. And I said, well, I think we, I think we can make that happen. So it's, it's, it's just so amazing the effect you have had on this town. Do you even realize how over the knockouts are in Homewood? How many people know about you? There are articles. The fans are always there. It's amazing the way this community responds to what you guys do. It's incredible. Yeah, I I have nothing but love for Homewood. Like every time you go down there, it's I'm from the north side, but when now point, I don't know how you feel punchy, but when I go down there, it's like home. I feel like I'm going to like my parents' home or something. Like I I'm home and it's great because everyone is so nice in Homewood. It's such a a cool little town that really like believes in good being good and kind too it's it, when you walk around people are like hi hi and they probably are like she's tatted up she's got to be a knockout but like <laughs> and they probably don't want to mess with us but um but I always I'm shocked at how kind and respectful the whole town is and how um like you know because for the juniors, we have a lot of, of people, local people that are, are interest us with their, their young, youngster, young skaters to, to skate with us. Um, 
and um i don't know i just i got nothing for love for them it's it's so cool like you feel like you're going you feel like you're you're going somewhere where it's like this is where they know everybody me. knows your name <laughs> yeah it's like the cheers bar you, go <laughs> and you just know that you're going to be welcome and anyone that comes in you're like all right this is how we work it it really is uh you know of of all the things that i do and places i do commentary there's just something about what you guys do that is extra special and the way the fans react to you uh when you're when you're when you break away and you skate and they just get so excited uh there's a, a good shot of Lucille Brawl and Marley Quinn beating up our friend Rion uh and I not I've never seen a fight ref go down so hard Dude, all of that was impromptu. I had no idea. And thanks for Rian because I was like, I'm going to beat you up. <laughs> it was fun. Rian, how do you feel Rian. about that? <laughs> Rian's not talking. He's still traumatized by the past. He's still traumatized, I know. But now we're Facebook <laughs> friends. So problem. What is the problem? Why, why did my name come up? I was just putting stuff up. What's going on? Well, because Lucille got you at the bout. Oh, she beat the shit out of me. She knows. <laughs> she knows. I got sucker punched. I was minding my own business. Next thing you know, I remember telling her, why is this happening? Why are we here? And it didn't matter. She just kept beating me up. No one no one cared. I was like, all right, that's fine. That's fine. And that, that was, I was done at that <laughs> But there's just some times where it's like the crowd, I think during that bout, actually, we didn't have a lot of fights going on, um, scripted stuff going. So we needed uh, some impromptu stuff. And luckily, Rian was right there and Marley had her hammer. And Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good at that type of stuff. Nala, did you see Rian get beat up? No, I wasn't at the bout. That's right. Have you heard about it? Did you, have you heard us? Did, what do you think about Rion getting beaten up? I don't know. <laughs> it needs to happen more often with the minors. Get in there. I want to fight. I and want to fight. Uh, what? How do you, I mean, you've coached, a, how long have you been coaching? That, that'd be my first question. Coaching roller derby? Yeah. I've been coaching roller derby since 2014. So almost 10 years. A long time to do anything. And when you're coaching. Mostly juniors because adults are very different. Yeah. So when you have the the minors in this case and, and juniors uh, previously, what do you employ as the way you teach? What are you looking to to get across? I mean, you know, there's a certain nuance to the actual skating that has to be done, but obviously you're very character driven. What is the most important thing about coaching to you? The most important thing is that they believe them in themselves um, and have better confidence with themselves. So, what we say, and Punchy knows this too, what we say as far as coaches, um, we will foster that. So that's why we have the whole 10 commitments. We abide by them. We hold each other accountable because no one no one can slip from that. So like if you're um, having a bad day and it's not working at practice, like we will stop if we need to, to take time. There has been times where we've been doing a drill and we'll stop the drill. Um, because as a coach, I am not explaining it well enough for the drill to run the way that we want it to run. And that's not on the skaters, that's on us. So we really try so that hopefully then they don't walk away feeling like I did bad on that drill. No, they did great. That was the coach that needs to get better with how we were explaining it. So like, that's just like a, for instance of when I don't want them to ever leave practice discouraged about something um, that they did during it or in life. So if the most, I, I would have to say that because I want them to be better skaters and better humans for sure. But if they are by better, I mean, they have to, the world is so crazy. Like when I was a kid, 
we didn't have social media, internet, or anything like that. And so the amount of stuff they get kind of telling them that they're not good enough or they're not like this person or they don't have enough money as like this person or this person has all the stuff and they don't like so they're surrounded like that so if we can effectively do one thing they should come out of that practice believing in themselves knowing that like other people back them up and they have more confidence in themselves than they did had they not done cko you're building them up never yeah. Down. I think that is the absolute best. That is a fantastic answer. And it's not all that different from the way Coach Punchy answered the question earlier. So here we are. We've got the two coaches. Uh, and in you have a great staff. You have a lot of coaches. You have like one. six or eight, depending on yeah. who. <laughs> two of the coaches. Um, so now when the minors bout comes in October, uh, You've had this bout where you against each other. Now it's going to be another bout where you're going to be coaching against each other. So now are you going to try to one up each other? So you've got the rivalry on the track. Now you're going to have the rivalry in coaching your teams. That could be a very interesting scenario. <laughs> it could be if it was about us. Yeah, it's not about what we're it's doing. Not about or us. Rivalry we have with each other on the track or any of that. No. Yeah, I mean, for sure, Punchy and I, like, when we're playing each other in the next bout, I think you're on blue and I'm on green. Or, no, you're not in it. I, I know. Um, But, like, you know, the next time we're playing, yeah, for sure it's on. But with the juniors and the coaching, I mean, not to give away our secrets, but we're communicating the whole bout. We know who's going out, how to make it good and entertaining. Yeah. Fair. So if that makes sense. So right now I'm I'm just going in between the the two teams to make sure communication's going on and we know what's going out there. If when we have our fight scenes, Luna and I'm looking at you but you can't tell. When we have our fight scenes coming up, that will be extra communication. Um we don't want to it's going to be a different approach to fight scenes cuz we don't want to encourage like youth to like brawl like and to solve their problems right but there will be some stuff going so so yeah I mean we we're always it doesn't matter if it's practice or not punchy and I, if punchy and I are in the line we go for each other like mm -hmm. in a respectful way though I, I'm just excited to get hit by punchy if you can hit yeah. me you can catch me um just kidding <laughs> But yeah, I mean, as for, as for the minors, like just at the last spot, obviously like the team that I'm coaching, like I'm rooting for, you know, my team, everybody, but I want my team, you know, they're my guys right now. You know what I mean? Totally. <laughs> but but I think as coaches at the end of the bout, we just want them to do better. Everyone. Yeah. And I know I for sure was cheering for every single person coming past me went around the track that day, my team, not my team, whatever that day. So yeah. absolutely. For the next bout, the juniors part, sorry, Luna, everyone's going to, they were kind of allowed to be with their friends for this bout. They got a little bit more of a choice of who was on each other's team. And they know that their hearts are going to get broken. Their dreams will get crushed for this next bout because they will be on opposite friend teams. Because, yeah, but that's, that's, this is how they learn. Me and Sogo, Sogo are partners in crime. You cannot separate us. One will be green and one will be blue. <laughs> another chapter for the story, Luella. Yeah, so you'll have to redo this again after in another month after the next bout so you can hear how Luna's dreams got crushed. <laughs> There'll be a whole nother answer to this whole question. It sounds really nice right now, but... Chapter five of that story she's writing. That is... You're lucky I don't have my sword. <laughs> it's getting It's getting intense. It's getting intense. Ladies, okay, I'll just make her run more laps at the next practice and I'll hit her with a noodle. <laughs> I'll take that noodle. You just know what happened when I have a noodle. <laughs> Sorry. Intense, intense. Yeah, Ladies, so you got fighting on Zoom, so you're fight and, and there's fighting everywhere. It's all about it's all about the competition. Ladies, you have been incredible tonight, and we are so thankful that you spent your time with us. Uh 
Punchy, thank you for coming on and staying so long. Uh, Beater Juice, thank you for after a very long day jumping on even for a few minutes to talk to us. Uh, we we love watching you skate. We love watching you perform. We love what you do. We are all knockouts uh, at heart, and we we support you guys so much. And Lunala, you heard what Red said. You heard what Rian said. We are all Lunala fans on this show, and uh, we support you 100%. So we're going to let – we see Lunala rubbing her eyes, a little tired. You got school in the morning. So we're going to let you get some sleep, and we're going to let these nice coaches uh, go do uh, their own personal lives. And uh, thank you for spending some time with us and letting us feed off of your light because you are so bright and – you make everybody feel better. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. Thank you for having us. It, it, really uh, have you again, because we're we're trying to do more knockout stuff because more knockout stuff be, keep, needs to be done because people keep asking us to. So yeah. we back and we will check in with you again in the near future. So yeah. you guys go ahead and log off and then we're going to say nice things about you before we go to sleep. Oh, dear. Well, uh -oh. sorry, I just ran out of the pool, but thank you so much for having us. Hi, thank you, thank you. All right, knock out, out. Thank you so much. Bye. All right, there they are, the knockouts and Lunala, the minor knockout. Um, Red, you've been doing sports entertainment, wrestling, combat. You, you've been doing a lot of things for a long time. Um, you talked about the passion it's contagious, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I mean, if you love it. And they clearly do. Yeah. I mean, you know, some people, you know, uh, you, you know, a lot of people think, uh, at, at least in the wrestling business, you know, uh, we're being hard asses or whatever you want to call it. You know, but you can see people that have that passion. And then you can see other people. Uh, you know, I got into it because my friend told me that I should do this. Or, you know, oh, I heard, you know, I could make, you know, millions of dollars. And, you know, like, no, you got to have a passion. For this. Otherwise, you won't last long. You um, know, and you can clearly tell those ladies have a passion uh, uh, for the Chicago knockouts. I've been saying this ever since the day I walked in the door there, that uh, there is something utterly spectacular and special about everything they do. And uh, I, I hope you do come out at some point and, and watch them work because uh, it, it it really is something special and Homewood is very lucky to have them. Um, but what I also want to talk about before we go and we'll wrap it, we'll wrap it quickly. Uh, Red, the ARC was in full effect at SCW WrestleTopia. And I have been on the chat all day and I have heard everybody talking about what an amazing show it was, how good Chris and Travis did on commentary, how great the show was. I saw pictures of Aaron and Xavier busted open. Uh, was it a good night for the ARC? For the most part, yeah. Tell take take us through your experiences. Uh, really, did anything, really, anything bad happen to you? Really, really, because that's all you care about. That's that's it. That's it. Care about yes, it. yes. Renee kept her title. Yes, Miles kept his title. Yes. So, so now, how'd the matches go? Matches weren't good. Who was Miles fighting? You know who he was fighting, Max Holiday. Oh, Max Holiday. Did anything special happen in that fight? I mean, aside from, you know, Miles retaining. That's special enough. That's all. Talk, talk to take us through the match. Did you get involved? Did you have to get involved in it at all? You just want people to know that I got me and Sue got real into. <laughs> so essentially you're not just tired you got a little shine happening huh ain't no little to it 
So Sue gotcha. What did yeah, you do, Sue? Yeah, but we kept the title, right? Such a nice man. He's he's such an amicable human. Why you got to bring out Sue's worst? What you didn't do? bring out Sue's worst? What you do? What you do to piss off Sue? I didn't do nothing. But he was about to hit Miles. I'm not you, about to let that happen. You took the boot for Miles. Took the boot for Miles. We are the heart. Well, I could lose this. And I'm saying no, because I told Ray that I wouldn't. But just know that it's out there in the world. What's out there in the world? I'm sorry. Nothing's out in the world. I mean, you can you can you can put it up, Rian. It, it's fine because uh, I've had to go to work. Uh, then I, I will I will give you ten seconds. There you go. All right. Oh, oh, oh. man! And and now here's the funny part. Oh. Here's the funny part that uh that that's that's the nice way. <laughs> Look at the shirt. Do do do. So that's the nice picture. You should have saw it uh once I got home. Uh it was not pretty. Uh you know, uh a lot of people I had to tell my boss this uh, Monday, and I told her, "Wrestling is real. People are fake." And I mean, we we we've said that time and time. People think, you know, what we do, you know, oh, you guys bounce on the trampoline, and you guys, uh, you guys really don't punch each other, and yeah, okay, people. Here's proof, right here, right here, people. Cry. She ultimately felt embarrassed because of what was happening. Right. So, you know, uh, it is what it is. You know, um, I know Max. So let me shoot for a minute. Uh, break down the fourth wall, as people say. Um, I know Max. Uh, me and Max have known each other for years. Uh, I have all the respect for Max, and Max has all the respect for me. Uh, it was one of those things that it happened, and it's part of the business. You know, I tell people all the time, this ain't fucking ballet, you know, and I get it. You know, a lot of people didn't know. It was my last show at SCW, you know. So uh, what better way to uh, end my career? at SCW within a pool of blood of my own blood. So um it is what it is. I mean I made the most of it. So uh did there a pool a pool of your own blood, there's that pool. I get it. You know, ha ha. Yeah so, getting nice. So I mean it is what it is. Uh but you know SCW and everybody uh they were worried. Uh, and, you know, one thing I've always been is a storyteller and a good, uh, a good actor, I should say, to a certain extent, uh, but dealing with Max, I didn't have to do too much, uh, but yeah, everybody was worried about me in the back. I'm still in pain, uh, I'm still recovering, uh, but I can see, uh, no issues, you know, just a nice little shiner, you know, for the next few days. Uh, back to business. So. Uh, I saw the crowd. Uh, it was one of the biggest crowds I've ever seen uh, in Shabans. How was that? I mean, was that amazing to, to, to be doing the biggest show of the year in front of the biggest crowd of the year? Uh. Anytime I love I love the crowd at, at, in uh Shabans, uh because they're into it. So uh I mean, even while I'm out there, they're talk they're trying to hold conversations 
it's like uh, I'm trying to do a do- job, uh, but and I I talk back to him. So, uh, but you know, to see all those people there, you know, they were there for uh, a fun filled evening. Uh, if you if people weren't there, they missed one hell of a show uh, from start to bottom. Uh, and you know, everybody left it out there that night. Literally. So uh we we you know as as performers we all we laid it all out on the line and nobody there should be not one complaint had by anybody. You know, we did our job. So and our friend Turtle is now the uh high voltage champion. Uh he, he did well uh fording the reign of uh the the puny uh puny genitals and uh, and all that. Yeah. Congratulations to Turtle. He, he did his thing, you know. Turtle uh, is, Turtle has achieved something I don't think he ever believed he really could. He can now at this point go anywhere and work. And you know, I know that's something that he wanted desperately to be able to do and uh you know, I'm I'm so pleased for him that he's having the opportunities to do it. And I'm hoping at some point Hades gives him an opportunity to do something different uh, at CSW because the man has paid all the dues in the world. And I'm thrilled that he's getting to live his dream the way he wants to do it. So congratulations, turtle, all the best. Um, yeah. Before we go, I wanted to talk just a little bit about where I was uh, on Saturday night. Uh, if if I didn't have this to do, I would have certainly been in Shabans myself. Uh, the The show I was doing is called A Night for Tyler, and it is a charity benefit show that they do every year. Uh, and it's the sixth incarnation of A Night for Tyler. I had never done one. This was my first. Uh, I didn't know Tyler's story uh, until I, I mean, I knew that, that he was, he was killed by a drunk driver, but I didn't know the story and I didn't feel the story until I met the family and I talked to everybody on the card and we felt in what was going on in the building. I have worked at some pretty big shows over, over time. Uh, whether it be Rocket, CSW, SCW, all the places I go, uh, you know, the, the shows are great. The enthusiasm is great. But what I experienced at a night for Tyler was it was it was different. Um, the young man had everything in this world. He was well liked. He was loved by all. He was an athlete. He was, you know, a wrestler, uh, you know, his his is uh, related to to Ben. Uh, who is the proprietor of Frontline. And it was pretty easy to assume that he was going to follow with Ben and, and become a star at Frontline. And all of that was taken away from this young man uh, because he was doing the right thing. A bunch of his friends had too much to drink and he was the designated driver. So he went to this party and he picked up his friends and dropped them all off at their houses safely. And as he was driving home, he's two blocks away from his house and he gets hit by a drunk driver and loses his life. And listening to the family and, and listening to the people that were in this arena that knew him uh, and watching the video montage on the wall and the way this was all put together, uh, it gave me chills. It made me tear up. It made me think of my own son and how would I feel if this happened to me and the pain six years on that the family was clearly feeling in that ring when they were thanking everybody. Uh, it made this very real. And, you know, then after all this happened, a show had to happen. And I can tell you that I've worked with most of these guys many times before, but what they brought to this night 
was nothing short of extraordinary. Uh, from TW3 flying off a 20-foot balcony to rolling down stairs to, you know, falls count anywhere to the ladder match where I thought Quinn Wittick died twice. Uh, I thought Shaq Jordan lost his rotator cuff. I, I, I didn't think the man was going to be able to use his arm again. These guys gave effort like I have never seen. And all these guys I named give effort every time, but it was special. And uh, in the end, the, the big ladder match for the title, uh, both titles were hanging uh, above the ring, you know, suspended. And at the last second, Wittick got one, Ewok got one, and they both fell to the side. So the United title was split, and we now have two champions. So it was a fitting end to a show that had a lot of meaning. And the kicker is the person that went to prison for for taking Tyler's life recently got out of prison. And if you can imagine how the family of Tyler felt about something like that, uh, I, I just could not be more impressed by the grace that they showed and the poise that they showed and the love that they brought off. You could feel Tyler in the building. His sisters participated in a match and one of his sisters, Mackenzie gave a stone cold stunner to Draven Stryker and Stryker <laughs> took the stunner like the rock took the stunner. Uh, when Austin would give it to him and, and it was I, I've never experienced a moment like that when a a stadium of people are united for one cause and uh, you know I don't think I'll, I it, it would be hard pressed to to ever see anything more spectacular than this not because you know I mean the wrestling was great don't get me wrong but it was the spirit of the crowd the spirit of the family and everything that went into raising money and all the money they raised that night goes to a wrestling scholarship in this young man's name in his high school. So every year, a wrestler at a, the school he starred at gets money to go on and live their dream because Tyler is not around to live his. And that really hit home for me. And it was a truly special evening, uh, so I don't like to miss home promotion stuff for just anything, but I felt I needed to be there. And uh, I'm so thankful that I was because it was a big night uh, and I'll never forget it as long as I live. Well, everybody, uh, I'm not going to say, you know, tragedy happens, you know, uh, but there's there's a different aura. Um, you can go on YouTube uh, and I've talked about this um, the night so Larry Sweeney uh, if you go back and you look the acid jazz benefit from IWA Mid-South happened on the Sunday Larry Sweeney participated um and during the show, after my match, uh, and before his, uh, me and Sweeney sat outside and we talked. I did not know it would be the last time we talked. Um, he said, I'll see you brothers next weekend at your car. No problem. And then we get the news that Larry has passed on. And now we have to fly to Philly and perform. Now, we're already messed up. But then to sit in the locker room meeting and Mike Quackenbush breaks down and other guys start running out because it's emotional. Eddie Kingston has to leave. And before the show, they do a video montage and all of us are around the ring. We are all tore up. Everybody. I'm balling. 
We knew it wasn't about us that night. It didn't matter. The show was about swimming that night. And we had to go on for swimming. So I'm sure the front line, it wasn't about TW3. It wasn't about Ewok. It wasn't about Quinn. It was about Tyler. Yep. And that that's one hell of a motivation. 100%. So, you know, unfortunately, these things happen. But also, they're the nights where we go out there we give it our all and we bust our ass even harder than before. Why? Because it's not about us. We take us out the equation for once and we make it about that person. So uh, kudos to everybody at Frontline Pro from the office down to the boys, to the ref, to the commentators, to everybody. And I'm sure it was one hell of a show. Uh, it really will stick with me for a long time. Uh, I've heard you talk about the Sweeney uh, tribute uh, a couple of times on this show in conversations with others. Uh, this is the first time I've really experienced anything like it. And now I kind of see why you talk about it. Even to this day, you break up when you talk about it. I get it. It's uh, it's emotional and it's uh, it's real life, man. It's it's real life creeping into something that we consider an escape. And, uh, you know, it just it it can it it can it can hurt you but it also can raise you to even greater heights and i think that's what happened saturday night uh in marshfield wisconsin uh it was spectacular proud to be a part of it guys this has been a long show i appreciate y'all hanging in as long as you did uh, obviously beater juice got here a little later than we thought uh but they were great and well worth it we love the knockouts we'll have more knockout episodes as we go uh, go around the table for some final thoughts. PX, where are you at? Did PX die? No, I'm here. I'm here. Uh, for some reason, my phone wasn't letting me unmute. Um, no, it was very nice hearing from Luna and um, just he hearing her background of her character tonight was very, very cool for me. And you've been to the knockout shows, so you've seen it. Does this? Okay. Get this gives you a more of appreciation for what you saw, doesn't it? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I had so much fun uh, when I went there. Was that, I think that was August when I went. Um, can't wait to go back. Yeah, you uh, they, they messed with you pretty good. It You, you fit in just fine uh, <laughs> and well represented uh, in Homewood at the knockout show. Yeah, it was it was a lot of fun. And now we have to we have to stop the evil reign of the uh, idol worshippers because this this stuff is getting nonsensical. And you know he I don't know if you guys saw the video, um, but Tony Gabagool was trying to get Damian Gray's autograph, and the only thing they had available was his high school yearbook. <laughs> but I'm not I'm not part of this at all. But then Damian Gray grabs my the collar of my shirt. Like he's going to fight me again or like he's going to shove me again. But the general manager, he he does come in at some point, but does he address that at all? No, not at all. Damian Gray, the absolute power trip. I heard you guys at the car show on Saturday met somebody that I work with. Oh yeah. Uh, my, my friend, my friend, Tom, that I work with had a 57 Chevy uh, in the car show and uh he he got to he got to hang out with Damian Gray and meet some of the guys and uh I guess Damian Gray told him yes yeah, Steve knows this bat pretty well he's not wrong <laughs> he's not wrong he's not wrong and there were a lot of great cars at the show we it was a real real good time well PX I always appreciate you being on this show sorry you didn't get to say much this time We'll try to remedy that as the future goes on, but we love having you as part of the Power Hour. Uh, don't ever change, man. Love being part of it. Thanks for having me part of it, Steve. And Red, despite your uh, wounded eye uh, and not being a, a a roller derby person to this point, uh, you gave great roses and you asked great questions, and I always appreciate how hard you work on this show. And you play Hurt. And you're still my hero. Now I'm going to miss you yeah. when you're on, bro.
Hey, and the sad part is, oh, uh, yeah, so, yeah, I ended my tenure at SCW on the 14th out in my tenure at C3, Ultimate Wrestling. Uh, yeah, so there's really just two or three more companies I need to say goodbye to. And that's it. And then, of course, uh, December 19th, uh, we will have the Sea Red Appreciation Night. The plans are in the works. We'll keep you guys uh, informed as to our season finale. Uh, you never know; it might even be the series finale. Uh, but you know, we'll 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 see how that goes in December. Uh, PX, you travel on a Tuesday night if we did a live remote, right? Absolutely, absolutely. We're gonna get. We're gonna talk to Rabbit. We're gonna get out there to the brewing company. And we're going to have red, oh boy. red night. That's what we're going to call it. Love uh, it. Thanks to the knockouts for joining us. Thanks to Lunala. Thanks to Beater Juice. Thanks to Punchline. Thanks to Cactus. Uh, thanks to Rion for, I think Rion dropped out, but he probably had to go to sleep or work, but he's always great. Thanks to PX. Thanks to C-Red. Next week on this show, uh, we get a visit from our resident madman, Hot Rod Daddy Andy. He graciously rescheduled so we could do Terry Allen and Aaron Xavier. He will be on this program next week, so don't miss it. Thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it, and we will catch you next Tuesday night right here on the Power Hour. Good night, everybody, and be nice to each other. Follow those knockout rules. Those are good rules. Good night.